My name is Stephen Likes, and I will be giving a, I guess, semi-short presentation on the Microsoft's or Microsoft XP's um, movie maker. Um, I don't claim to be an expert. What I'm going to show you is stuff that I've done repeatedly myself. There are many things about this program that I don't know. So if you have a question that I can't answer it, it's probably because I haven't done it yet. So let us get started. Okay. All right, now we blur player. Have you ever downloaded a series of video clips only to realize that it would have been better if they had been just one long clip? Or maybe you had a long clip that was a small portion that you didn't want to, didn't want or wanted to get rid of and didn't know what to do or what software to get. Or maybe you just wanted to capture some video from your computer vid camera. Or maybe you went online looking for a video editor and didn't want to pay the price for it or couldn't decide on which one to get. Did you know that if you have Windows XP that you don't have to, to turn on the internet to find a video editor? That's right. Windows XP comes with its own video editor, Movie Maker. And if you're looking for something, looking to do some simple editing, it might just be the silver bullet you're looking for. Okay, so that's what today's presentation will be about. Question. Movie Maker. Yes, question. What is Where'd you get the name Hiroshi? Hiroshi is a Japanese nickname that I acquired. At, well, actually, I have a college degree in Japanese studies. When I graduated, I asked a Japanese friend for a Japanese nickname to go along with the degree, kind of. And Hiroshi is what came back, and I've been using it ever since. Okay, let us stop. Yeah, Okay, today, today we're going to cover just three things of Movie Maker. One is joining clips together, removing a portion of a clip, and downloading or capturing video from Movie Maker. And how we're going to do that is I'm going to start off by talking about Movie Maker itself and the four, three, the three of the joining clips, removing a portion of a clip, and downloading. Then we'll take a short five minute break in case anybody needs to go to the bathroom or whatever. And then after that, I will actually go through and do some examples of joining, removing, and capturing. All right, so let's start with the brief overview here. First of all, Movie Maker is a simple editor. There's no flash, there's no whiz bang, there's no multiple streaming. It's very simple, straightforward stuff. The interface itself basically has four parts to it. First part is the collections. The collections actually is the actual clips themselves in their raw form or regular form. Next to that, there will be a clip or a subclip window. When you bring in a clip into the collections, you have two choices that you can do. One is to just to bring it in as it is. Or two, let Movie Maker break it up into smaller sections. And these smaller sections will be revealed on this clip window. Next to that, there will be an actual video player. It's basically media player as you would normally download it, only it's been truncated a little bit. It also has a couple of extra features on it, including a split button, which we'll be using today. And below all of that is the movie storyboard. Now, this is where you actually play around with it. Um, the new movie storyboard will have spots where you actually will insert the clips. There's actually a transition box in between each one of these. And then there's also a video effect box actually within the clip itself. I'm not going to be talking about transitions or effects today, but I will show you where those are at and where you can access those. Movie Maker can download or bring into the collection just about any format out there. So if you're doing Windows video format, MPEG, it will even bring in MP3 and a couple of other things too. Unfortunately, when it comes to putting it back out again, 
it pretty much only spits it out in Windows Media Format. So you're pretty limited in that. Other issues that it has that I've experienced is that sometimes it takes a long time to create a video. Um, if you have something that's like got a very high bit rate on the recording, it can take a very long time to put that back out. And we're talking in terms of hours. I had one clip that ended up being about 400, no, about 350 meg in size. It took four hours for it to put it together. So it's not a speed demon by any of the imagination. Another problem that I had with it is I've actually had it lock up. It locked my computer up one time. There's a door now. And it also has, sometimes when you go to split clips and start doing something, it will die. Crash, whatever you want to call it. I've had it where it will come up and say, Windows Media Editor, Movie Maker's had a problem. Do you want to send this to Microsoft? Yeah. And I've had other times where it just went, goodbye, right off the screen. I think that has more to do with the clips that you bring in more than the actual editor itself. Um, I'm using a laptop. It's a pretty good laptop. But then once again, it's a laptop. It's not a desktop. It's not the fastest thing out there. So that could be another reason why it's crashing. Um, just be aware of it. There are actually an autosave feature built into Movie Maker that can't help compensate for that problem if it should come up. And it's just a question of how often you want to have that happen, whether it's Yes. How much memory do you need to run that program? My laptop, well, this both my laptops have 512. But I have a feeling that it probably can do it with less. But most people nowadays, they have 512 minimum on whatever machine they're using. So um, this laptop right here only has a 64 meg video memory. And it can do it. My other one has 128. So I don't think your video memory is that critical. But as with most things, faster processor, more memory, easier things are going to happen. I think that comes down to the speed issue. How fast is it going to put the video clip back together again? So, um, let me think anything else. That's pretty much it for limitation. So, I mean, like I said, it's very simple. It's not professional quality in any stretch of the imagination. But if you want to do something simple and you want to do it quick and you don't want to go out and buy something, it pretty much will do the job. Yes? When you sh compress videos uh, or shrink them down to smaller size, do you, isn't there a limited number of choices with Movie Maker? Okay, what Movie Maker does in its video formats when it spits it back out, it basically defines a, a bit rate. And that bit rate will decide how big how many shots per second that it puts out. Um, the clips that I will do here that I did at home were 512 bits per second and they're 320 by 240 and they're 30 frames per second. But this thing can do 600, 640 by 480 30 frames per second and it gets even higher than that. I'll actually show you that. When we go through and do the actual save there will be choices that I will show you. Okay, let's go ahead and go through the processes here. Alright, for joining two clips together, it's pretty simple. You pretty much, you bring in the desired clips into the collections. Um, that'll happen through the, um, I think you can drag and drop them straight into the collections or you can do through the normal file system. You know, file, import collections, and it'll go out there. Google. Take the desired clips you want down to the storyboard, the order you want, and then save them. Saving the movie actually has its own set of sub-processes. One, of course, is choosing location. You can dump this straight out to a CD if you want. You can also dump it straight to the web, or you can dump it back to your video camera. It does have those options. I usually just dump to the hard drive. So after I choose a location, it's usually name, and then the bit rate that I want to say. Um, one thing that I've noticed is that you generally want to go from a higher resolution to a smaller resolution. AE, if you've got 64 by 480, 
if you go back, if you go down to 320 by 240, you're usually doing okay. If you go the other way, you suffer a graininess that'll that'll pop up. So, I have actually taken um, some that had a very high bit rate, but a very low resolution, and went up one size, and it seemed to be all right. I've also tested these clips where I did something in 320 and then boosted it back out. To, and it really depends on the bit rate that you say that more than the actual size that you record that, from my experience. Okay, so joining clips is actually pretty simple. Removing portion of a clip is a little bit more involved. Once again, you bring in your desired clips. Put them down into the storyboard in the order you want. Then, what you do is you click on the storyboard frame, the actual box down at the bottom, and that will bring it up into the video up into the video player. And what you want to do is let the video, you can either grab the scroll bar and bring it across, but if it's a very large clip, you may end up running past it very quickly. So I usually just let it play up to the point where I need it. Stop it, and then hit the split button. And what the split button will do is create two clips. Then I just continue on until the point where I want to stop. And once again, split it again. Now I have three clips where I used to have one. And then for the desired thing I want to take out, I click on that. And then I can either hit the delete key, or I can go to the edit menu and delete it that way. And then save as before. If you make any mistakes, you can always do the undo button. As long as you haven't saved it yet, you can sit there and you can undo it all the way back to where you started from. Um, this has been, been handy a couple of times where I made a mistake and then deleted the wrong one. You can go and undo it and put it back up there again. Or you, you found out that where you stopped it, where you actually did the split, was incorrect. You can back it up all the way. Any clip that you split, you can look at. It becomes a, its own very own clip in the storyboard. The storyboard will expand out and it will have its own effects button and it will have its own transition button there. So if you want to have things happen in the middle, it's not, you can do that. Alright, and the last thing we're going to try to do today is capture some video. I have brought my own video camera and have brought the video capture device that I use to do that. And we'll be using that. We'll grab a small clip. I'm not going to do very long, probably about 10 seconds at most, but it will be there. And we can play around with that if you want. The process for doing that is pretty, get your video source set up, then choose the capture video from the file menu. The next window we we'll we brought up will be choosing what video source and audio source you want. Um, on my laptop at home, I actually have two sources. I have a video camera that's built into the laptop itself. And then I have the external device here. So those are the both of the modes I can choose either one of those. When you choose your video and audio source, it'll then ask you for what you want to call the clip that you're about to capture and where you want to put it. Unfortunately, Video Maker will only let you capture video to a hard drive. You can't do it to a PC MCIE device or anything like that. It has to be to a hard drive. Then the next thing you choose, after you've decided that, you go next, and then it'll ask you what video settings. And this basically is where you've got your bitrate issue. You have, that's like 15 different choices, and some of them have been earmarked for like special devices, but I mean, it's just a question of setting a bitrate and a size and a frame rate. And I'll go through those when we go through the actual capture. Then you hit next on that and it brings up the next window and this window will have a preview window it'll have a start button, a stop button and then some data information down at the bottom like how well the clip's been running, how much memory it's taken up so far and all this stuff. Um, you just go up to start, get your video going, hit the start button and it starts recording. Um, the preview window is pretty much a good source of what it's going to look like. So if you see a, st 
stutter or you see something get uh, get hung up, that's going to be reflected across off the clip. All right. <clears throat> Video Maker says it can set up a time to record. You say, okay, do five minutes and then stop. But I've never gotten it to work right. So you pretty much have to wait until the clip is finished or whatever, up to the point you want to record and then go to the stop capture. Now the beauty about this is that you can theoretically stop capture and then advance it a little further on and then hit start capture again and just continue on with the original clip and we'll make one clip out of that. So in some ways you can delete stuff on the fly as you're going. When you're all done, you just hit the finish button and that spits it back out to the hard drive in the formula. And you can play it right away. You can go right there, double click on it, media player will come up and boom off it goes. If you make any mistakes or you feel, okay, this is totally not right, you can either back up, start over from the beginning, or you can just cancel it and it'll just drop the whole thing. Sometimes what will happen is it won't cut off cleanly or it may carry over a little bit. So you may have to actually go back and remove certain portions of the clip to get what you want. Okay. All right. Let's take a five minute break. Um, probably be less than that since most of the stuff I've already got set up and I've gone through this pretty quick. So, catch you in about five. Okay, everybody, let's get going here. All right. The next up is the actual to do part, or the do. I'm going to do a couple of examples of the various, th the three things I talked about earlier. Um, so, Without any further ado, let's get going with that. I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to do, yes, this is the ES shot, in case anybody was really paying attention to that. Say what? That's what? It's, an anime, it's a famous animation oh, series that's your, uh, that I use as my wallpaper. Okay, here it is. In fact, I'll go full screen here just to make life simple for everybody. All right, unfortunately, this is in Japanese, but if you have the English OS, it will be all in English. Um, my, my computer here is Japanese, so. This portion right here is our collections window. This is where you will be importing, or where all your raw video clips go as far as a list is concerned. This is the sub-clip window that I talked about. This is where it will be broken down. And this is, of course, our video player, which looks a lot like media player, except that it has two extra buttons here. This is the split button, and this is a screen capture button. We won't be using the screen capture button. We'll just be doing this. We, will, we might be using these buttons here. These are the incrementals. This is total rewind. This is total fast forward. And this is incremental, frame by frame buttons you can use to get a precision stop point for your split. And down here we have the storyboard. Here are the transition boxes. And the transition boxes basically use the video transitions up here, which I won't get into, but there are several here that you can use to transition between one video to another. And then in the big actual video itself, you have different effects that you can also apply to the video. But we won't go into that today. We'll be just concentrating on getting our collection together. So, let me go ahead and bring in a few. And of course, the first thing we do is we go to um, import video clip. Actually, I said a lot of Sorry, we'll get to that in a second. Right here. Collections import. And I need to get to here. If you look down here, these are all the different types that you can have. You got Wave, you got JPEG, you've got AVI, MPEG, one, two, three, and a bunch of other stuff. Just about anything, anything you can think of, I think it can actually bring it to it can import. Right. Now, sorry, this is me recorded this morning actually. 
Okay, with this import, it brought it in just one click. But there's an option on here where you can have it split it up. And I forget exactly where that option is. I forget where exactly. But there's a there's a option on here that allows you to bring in the clips into more than one. That could be a real nightmare. Well, when it's all in English, it's very easy to figure out where it is. This is all in Japanese. I'm used to using it in English. So and the only reason why I know where things are in the Japanese is because it pretty much is a carbon copy of it. So I usually don't play around with it too much. But um, there are ways to set it up so that you, you'll have basically more than one subclip here. Okay, so we've imported our clip here. We take it and we drag it down here. Ooh. Oops, there it is. Okay. We go up here. When you bring in the collections, you can bring in as many as you want at one time. I'm only doing it one at a time just to, look, to keep things a little slow. Let's see. Oh, okay. Let's do that. And it's still right in as well. I don't think there's any limit to how big the clip can be. I've had clips that are several minutes long that come in here without any problem. Um, I haven't tried to download anything over an hour, but I think it pretty much could do it without too much trouble. I'm kind of lost. I'm, I'm always like four steps behind you guys. <laughs> You're talking about video clips. Yes. So you've got a, already you've got a video that's been stored someplace on your hard drive? Uh -huh. And you're going to tell us how to do that later, right? Yeah, that's part of the capture portion of it. The way, the way that, one of the good things about this, let's say you go to the internet, yeah. and there's like a preview. Let's say there's a movie preview. Yeah. they got four or five different clips. But you want to see them all at once. You want to spend, you know, ten seconds here, ten seconds there, ten seconds here, ten seconds there. You wish they were like all together as one clip so you could see them all at once. And that's basically what I'm talking about right now. You've downloaded this clip off the internet. You have it on your hard drive. Or in this case, I have it on memory card. And you're grabbing it off the memory card and you're putting it in the program here. And the idea is to string them together so they're one clip. Okay. There's movie maker captions too. All right, so let's take the second one here. Put that right there. Boom, in order. Now, in theory, I could reverse the order here. These clips are very simple. It's just me going one, two, three, four, five, six. That's all it is. In fact, I'll run this one just so you can see it. Unfortunately, the audio portion of it's a little hard to do because my speakers aren't. It's not loud enough. When I went to record it, it the, the mic on my other which is loud. Okay, which is the reason why I use my fingers. And there'll be a reason for that in a second. Okay, this is the second clip. Okay, now when you play the clips all together, it'll tell you a total time, and then it will also tell you like where in the clip itself you. So we have our two clips. So let's put them together. Let's save them as a video. So we go here and we go to this, which is which in English would say make a make into a movie. Yeah, what's the video a movie? Technically, as far as the program is concerned, there's no difference. However, with these options here, you can dump it to the computer. You can dump it straight to a CD. You can email it to somebody. Um, put it up on a website or dump it back to your camera. I usually put it on the computer, so we'll stay with that choice. Now it's asking for a destination and name. And we'll just say me one, two, three, four, five, six. And we will go to Oops, I thought that worked. Now, as I said, I have a memory card in here, but it doesn't. Well, actually, it does see it. It's right there. So we'll 
we'll dump it right back out to where I got it from. Okay. Yeah, right there. And as you can see, I got it put it right here. Alright, and now I'm gonna next. Maker only exports to Windows Media Video. That's the only format that they spits it back out at. But you can import MPEGs. And I've done that. I've actually imported MPEGs. I've strung them together and I've spit it back out as a Movie Maker. As a, as a, not Movie Maker, but a, a movie form, as a Windows Media format. Now, for some reason, this thing is not letting me. At this page, you can get options. Now, for some reason or other, it's not letting me take the options. I don't know why, but it's not letting me do that. And so it's going to be basically putting it back out in the same format. It's a 512 kbits per second. It's a 320 by 4, 240 video clip, and it'll be 30 frames per second. Um, estimated size is going to be 2.4 meg. And this is how much space I have left. How much space I have left on the card here? How high should that memory be? It can go up as far. This thing can do up to two megs per second, two megabits per second. So for for a video to not look lousy, you want to keep it up around at least. Five, it depends on the size. Now, five twelve is I think the max that you can get for three twenty by. 240. If you go to 640 by 480, you can get up to like 2 megabits per second. As for what is the best, it's What's hard to reasonable read. minimum. Reasonable minimum. So for a 640 by 480 video that you don't want to be in strobe motion or any any weird artifacts. Oh, I was gonna play the clip. Well, that's pretty big window size. I mean, compared to what you see on the web. The minimum that I use on this is a 768 kbits per second, and that gives out decent quality. Um, ideally, you want to go with one megabit per second, but the problem with that is it chews up like five megabits per second of video, so your videos can get pretty large pretty quick. And there's a 1.5 and a 2.0 meg that you can use too, and I don't see really much difference because it's really how you imported it and then spinning it back out again. Um, I think what happens when you get the two, you get the bigger bit rates. It means when you go to expand it, it tends to be a little bit clearer than on the lower ones. Actually, one answer, Jeff, for, for this format, um, the commercial companies like Blockbuster Online use between five and eight hundred kbps. So they consider that kind of video or kind of DVD-ish. Um, but Ernie was telling us yesterday, or last month, that, that the latest codex, which this is a few years old, but with the latest codex, you can get the similar appearance at 100 or 200 kbps. Wow. And the one I put up on the PC Club website is, is averaging close to 100. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. They've improved it. looks better than DHS. Yeah. So the actual compression algorithms are better. Yeah, yeah, this is this is really this is like five year old technology, and of course DVDs are twenty years old technology. Okay, well let me just run the clip here. Alright. Okay. Right looks like slow motion. Steve. I was going slow on purpose. You are. <laughs> well, like I said, I did this on purpose because when I go to remove, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this exact clip and I'm going to 
take out the middle portion of it. And the idea of doing the fingers and then talking was to show, okay, you can actually see what I pulled out. All right, let us continue here. All right. When you're done with the video, you can actually save the project. And what that'll do is it'll record <coughs> what you brought to the collection and what you've done down here in the storyboard so far. However, if you somehow delete the clip, in other words, you move it or otherwise it's not where it was when Movie Maker saved it, a big X will appear here. And it'll go, where is it? It won't give you an error per se. All it's going to do is just show you this big red X in the clip box here. And it'll still be here in the collections. All right. So let's bring in our uh, new video here. Okay, and then we'll clear out the storyboard. To delete a clip off the storyboard, like I said, you just click on it and you press you can press the delete key in. Bye bye. Keep going. All right. All right, now, let's remove a portion of it. Let's get rid of the point where I'm not using my fingers. Okay, so we can run the clip. We'll stop right there. All right, so we stopped it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to split the clip. Well, you, you understand why he's doing this, right? The idea is, is he wants here to have one, two, three, four, five, six. But what he did is one, two, three, four, five, six. And he's going to remove. Well, actually, four. what I did, I, what I did is I went one, two, three, and then I repeated one, two, three without using my fingers, because my original plan was that it would record at a higher volume. But when it recorded it, which was like 20 minutes before I left to come here, um, it wasn't recording very well. So I said, this will work. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go down here and use the split button. And you press the split button, and boom, it splits it. So now I have two clips. Okay. Now let us continue here. Now, when it does the split, it puts it on the most recent clip split. So in other words, we're on the latter part of the clip. So let's just continue. Now, to give you an idea, okay, if you look closely, I'm backing up a frame at a time now. You see there's a light difference? You see where the light changes a little bit? Okay, that's where the actual clip was joined at that point. Because the lighting in my room, the clouds went away and got a little brighter in my room. Okay? So, just to have some fun, we'll back up and include a little bit of the darkness so that shift is still there. And we'll split it right here. You can see the problems that Hollywood has when they do all their editing and uh, sometimes they join clips together and they're shot in slightly different lightings. Yeah. And stuff. Okay. All right, so now this middle part is the part we don't want, right? So we just delete it. Boop, boom. Let's say, oops, I made a mistake. I didn't want to delete that clip. You can go back up here. Use the undo key. How about Control Z? Does that work in this program? Uh, yes, Control Z will work. And there is actually a button here that you can do that. Or you can also do the re you can also undo or do the redo key. And I think if you press that, boom, it'll make it go away again. So you have basic the basic editing functions that Windows normally supplies you with. So you can undo and redo and everything else like that. All right, so there, we got this clip now. And that's the clip we want to keep. So let's go ahead and save it again. Only this time I'm going to dump it on my hard drive. I'm not going to put it on it. I'm going to put it on my 
I heard correct, because I don't get those options. I think part of the problem is the drive. And we'll put it back there in big caps. How's that? And... Let's call it... Sorry for the simple number names. Now, for some reason, it's not letting me have these options. Oh, there we go. Okay. Sorry, I can't read the Japanese. All right. These are all the options you have. Walking PC. And if you look at the, the data information down here, you'll notice this stuff is changing as I, as I go down. Let's see if I can get to it here. These are the staging formats? Yeah, these are the different bit rates you can get. And if you look down here, <coughs> look down here as I cycle through these, you'll see that the information down the bottom is changing. Now, once again, this is, of course, in Japanese, so you can't really get a good idea of what they're saying. But this is a variable bit rate, large picture. This is a variable bit rate for small. This is a 1.2. This is what was it? Broadcast. Broadcast. This is for like local broadcast. 2.1 meg. <laughs> yeah, that's what it says. It says local broadcast. Then as we get down here, then it's land. All right. This is the 1.1 meg. This is the one that I typically use because it's just at two. It's just at 640 by 480. And down here, you can see it takes, well, you can't really see it here. This is just telling you what the clip is. But this is about 3 megs per second on here. I could be wrong. It could be 5, and then and the 1.0 the 1 is like 7. So we'll just cycle through these real quick. You also have like 15 frames per second. That's what it means to look a little jerky. Ooh, 1995. Yeah, 48k bits per second. That's ISDN speeds. And it goes, here is um, IT, uh, this is like TV interleave. To give you an idea, give you an idea. Remember this clip? It's only like three was three megs before. Look how much it is. I've got DB Abbey, and this is it's going to be 116 megs to make. To give you an, that'll give you an idea of how much it should. So for like a two minute video, it's going to be up there a megabyte. It's going to be huge at that speed. So as you can. So you, you get different sizes, which play also play into what you want to, you know, what do you want to save it as? Is it really that important to have all that bit rate being that high, or, or can you get away with something smaller? And as mentioned before, I mean, this is of course old technology. I don't know what the new codexes will do. It's not set up to handle those. Is it worth an upgrade? I mean, like for video editors, you actually get new codecs and algorithms to are different. I have to admit that I have not upgraded Movie Maker. I think there are a couple of upgrades. This is three now. Yeah. But, but this is one here. I mean, this is not this is not your choice for quality output. Well, like I said, it, it's quick and dirty. It's not. It's not. You're not doing TV quality here, guys. You're do, you're putting two clips that are basically already in existence. And you're stringing them together, or something you've recorded off your video camera here. You know, and you just want it on your computer so you can put it up on the web. And it'll play in real player and uh, quick time other players, right? It's movie. It's Windows Media Format. That's it? That's it. You have to use a Windows Media Player to play it? 
Uh, well, if you're a real real player, will handle Windows Media Format. No, I'm pretty sure it won't. I'm pretty sure you can get the Windows Media Player for Mac, which works really well, and PC, and there's some hardware devices that come with it, some weird little video players. That's it. Really? Why not just export it in MPEG-2 format, then? something more universal? Excellent question. Excellent question, but it doesn't do that. Doesn't do it? Doesn't. Trash it! Oh, sorry, dude. I feel it's one of those Trojan horses. It's like, it's free. Yeah. Try it. You'll like it. Proprietary. Well, once again, please refer to previous coming of being, you know, quick and dirty, not... And what if you want to write a title like, this is Stephen Hiroshi's video? Can I movie? Sorry, dude. <laughs> oh, this, this, this has a title, right? No. No, there's no title on this. Are you kidding? Not in that fixed panel? Well, there might be something. I, like I said, I've never played with the effects. There's no tiling engine. That's why I never use it. Are you sure there's no tiling engine? Well, you could always make a JPEG title. Oh, yeah. Thank you. you. Create the wheel. It's just amazing how bad Microsoft is at copying Apple products. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what were they thinking? How hard is it to copy something? Well, the whole thing, I mean, they got the video on the wrong side, they got these stupid green colors. They must have been uh, in a hurry. I really couldn't tell you. They do have that really cool star there in the background, though. <laughs> that is definitely an improvement. Actually, sometimes it, by mistake, comes in the foreground. So, but anyway. Sorry guys, I don't know what to tell you, but that's just the way it is. Well, this is definitely our speed. I think a lot of us have never made videos with their computer. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, it's it's there for you to play with, mm -hmm. right? You know, you, you don't, you grab a couple of clips, you put them together, what happens? If you can handle Movie Maker, it puts you in a good position, I think, to step up to the next more powerful stuff because you have an idea of what's going to happen, right? You're going to have some sort of storyboard somewhere in there. You're probably going to have something that brings in the clips and then maybe breaks them down into smaller clips so that you can play around with individual ones for longer clips. Remember, this thing's only like 18 seconds total length or 30 seconds total length. Um, I've been dealing with clips that are five, six minutes long. And where you see these effects, there'll be nothing but little mid mid clips here to play with. And once you drag a transition, <laughs> what, you want to do a trail? Okay. What transition do you want to do there, Reed? I, I, like, like, you I just like the sideways teeth. It's like jaws. <laughs> 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 you think? It's like you're in the lot looking between two Christmas trees trying to decide which one. Alright, let's back it all the way up. Alright. Now, as I said, I've never done this before, so we're, we're experimenting here. Let's see what happens. I've been going onto the internet and downloading. Basically, somebody's made a long clip, broke it into smaller sections, and I want to put it back in a long clip because it's kind of a hassle if there's like ten of them. It's like okay, there's you know one minute long. Okay, now I got to start, you know go to Movie Maker, bring in the you know load up the next clip, press play. Okay, watch it for a minute. Oh well, right in the middle of something. So this way I can just string it all together and make it back into one huge clip, and I can just watch it like a movie. Okay. Let us continue here. Okay, where did I put it? What am I going to do? Alright, so let's go take a look at what we did. Put that here. Did it catch? Alright, so this is what I ended up putting together. I can't hear anything. That's right, on a preview, usually there's no sound. 
No, the preview will give you sound. Give you sound. It will give you sound. Just the clips that I recorded don't have any any sound on them. Now, I do believe there's a way you can match audio with the video. In other words, dub over what's there. Video maker or movie maker can do that. But I've never had a need to do it. And I don't know exactly where the track ends up. But there is a way of bringing in an audio track that you can put over the top of this. Well, you can't subtitle on I found it a little bit tricky. Uh, you want to bring in, an, you can bring in an external sound source and run along with your video. But it's hard to get rid of your original sound on your video footage. So, you know, it's kind of like awkward. On iMovie, you could simply extract audio in that, uh, and then you could adjust the uh, volume for both of them. And you can actually, can you actually null out the sound of your original footage? Yep. Not only can you null it out, you can delete it. It's kind of neat. Didn't know it was so far off. Kind of one in your other back, aren't you? Yeah, my mom's got it. All right. When you want to clear out your collection. What will happen here in collections, you keep bringing things in, it just keeps this list, it keeps growing. So if you want to manage it a little bit, you can say, okay, I'm done playing around with that, I don't need that in there anymore, and do boom, 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 delete it. Just hit the delete key, you can get rid of them. Um, I've had one time where I had a whole, I had like 60 of them in here, and like I've done what I wanted with the first set, now I'm moving on to the second set, it's like, why do I want to keep that there? There's no point in keeping it there, so just clear it up. All right, now. Let's go ahead and import some video, shall we? Alright. So we go to video capture. You need to choose your device. Um, if you have several devices hooked in, they'll be and you have them all the drivers and set set up, they'll be listed here. So you can have more than just one choice. I only have one. I have a thing right here, which is basically a, a video capture device. It takes video from a source, like my video camera here, and runs it through the USB port so that I can capture it, play it, look at it, you know, use whatever I want with it. Um, I've actually used this with my parents when I vid conference them using MS Messenger and hooked up the video camera so they could see what it looked like outside. So this has been a very handy thing. And the cool part about this was it only cost me about 3,000, 4,000 yen to get it. Let's see, where'd you get it? Where'd I get it? Yeah. Got it from Compmark. That's kind of neat. Hmm. Um, yeah, on my computer I have a FireWire card, so I just, it's kind of like stuck in the computer. I don't have an external device like that. But the, I guess USB can't capture, is that right, so far? Like USB capture software? No? So you need like an external device like that? Yeah, I think so. And um, so yeah, but it works out great. I mean, you know, plug and play basically. This unfortunately for some reason when you pull it out and you put it back in again, the drivers go south for some reason. You gotta reinstall everything. Windows doesn't realize, hey, I've seen this before, just in a different port, so. But anyway, okay. So let us go ahead. You have three choices here. Um, one is you have a audio source. You have where the where that where basically your sound card is what this is. Um, you have what where the source is. Right now I'm running off the mic. And you you can see as I'm talking here that level is going up and down. Um, this can be used to adjust that. So if you have like a low input volume, you can jack it up, or you can turn it off. Put it back up to about here. Okay, this is the different types. My device has two different inputs. One is S-Video, one is Composite. Since I'm using the Composite off the camera, we'll put the Composite here. In fact, just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and turn this volume up way up. And we'll see whether when I record the clip, whether we can actually hear something on it this time. All right, then we go to next. Once again, location, name. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and I'll actually just put in like test. Cap one, and then once again we can have our speeds. Here's where you make a decision how what kind of bitrate you want to capture the video in. Um, 
I tend to stay around, as I said, around here. This is a 640 by 480, 30 frames per second. It seems to work out nice. It has a rate of five megabit, five megabytes per second. So if you're not careful, it can add it real fast. Um, this one, local broadcast at 2.1, is basically three times that. It's 14 megabytes per second of video. And I think if I cycle through, you can see things will change. 1.5 is 10 megabytes. I've used 1.1 1. 1 megabyte before to do a capture, and that's 7. But we'll do this at the 768. All right, boom. Now we get our preview. Now, of course, I haven't turned my video camera on, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. That's what it's looking for. And as soon as that comes up, oh, there we are. So hang on a second here. So as you can see, we can see our just selves now. <laughs> I can see camera. Somebody suggested doing something like this. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have to put the mic down because I've got to have, hold the camera here and then I've also got to turn this thing on. So give me half a second here. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here. That is the start capture. And you basically just press it. And right now it's starting to capture. If you look down about mid on the left-hand side, you can see things are starting to add up. Seconds are starting to roll on. And the memory, the, the size is starting to increase. Since this is obviously my video camera, I can zoom in on people. Smile, you're on candid camera. Oh, we can go to a more wide shot. Hey, what's we doing over there? Calculating. Oh, let's see. Oh, yeah, he is, isn't he? Oh, there's our cameraman over there. And there's our cameraman right there. And all right. And then, once we've pretty much captured what we want, we go down here to the stop. Look at the stops. There it goes. Okay, now it's stopped. You notice that things are not increasing in size here. We just pretty much come to a stop here. Now, at this point, if we wanted to, let's say, let's say I was taking video over here, but I didn't want to record this transition shot, you know, moving over here. I could have stopped it here, moved the camera over here, and then started it back up again, and it will continue. So let's say I'll take, a, take an outdoor shot. I'll go up here, and now it'll start to continue to capture. So this is one way you could help edit some of the stuff that we don't want in there, just by controlling it. You definitely come down here to the finish button. Press the finish button. And it gives me an error. Ha <laughs> ha! Thank you very much. What did you do? Okay, something's there. Let's give it a second and see what it does. Like I said, I've had this thing hiccup on me more than once. This is probably another example of it, doing just that. I was curious about your export uh, type of your camera. Is it all, aren't all DVD cameras like FireWire exports? No. That video camera is about five years old. It? It's straight composite video. Oh, I see. That's why you got your little capture card. That's why I had to have the capture card on there, yeah. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. It seems to be having a fit, so I'm going to see if I can just get it to stop. Please stop.
All right, well, video, when the movie maker has had a conniption fit here and is flopping around on the floor, so I need to basically terminate this thing because it'll sit there and keep doing it. Good night, crazy. Yeah, I know. Do it anyway. Okay. I've had to do that more than a few times. This is one of those problems. It's not not the greatest thing in the world. But let's just see what it did get. Because it did capture something. No sound though, huh? Yeah, am I getting any sound? Actually, I'm not sure your sound was plugged in, Stephen. You got a microphone? I got a microphone up here on the... Roger. Yes. We weren't making any noise, though, were we? Yeah, but I was trying to talk. We were doing the bad move thing. <laughs> but this is like, this is the kind of quality you'll get from it, though. And once again, that's the quality of the camera, really. It's not a quality of the program. And the cameraman. Yeah, which is pretty bad. <laughs> Sorry, dude. No tripod. No tripod. Well, once again, it's it's the camera. The camera is not. And that's where it stops. Okay. I guess we got as far as that. And then when I tried to start it back up again, that's probably where I had it failed. But. Let's see if it actually brings us back up again. Okay. The save feature I told you about before. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. It saved what we had did about ten about five, six minutes ago. Mm -hmm. So what we had done up to that point was saved. So if the program does crash, you do actually have a fail save. I've had a couple of times where, where I get the little, it's made an error, do you want to send a message to Microsoft? You have enough time to do one more command. And I've gone up here and I've actually saved when it's done that. And it will save it. It will save the project. And then you just say no and it crashes. You bring it back up and then you just reopen the project and you can start right where you left off. Except for maybe the, the one thing that you were doing when it crashed. That's the only thing it won't save. So that has come in handy a couple of times. So there is a little bit of a backup feature in there. And you can adjust that. Right now it's set for 10 minutes. You can set it down to 5 minutes or whatever you want it. So, all right. Well, our clip did not get saved on the fail site. So we can always bring it in. And since I dumped it to the hard drive, let's go to the hard drive. Get rid of me down here. All right. Now, if we want it, we can start having fun with this. Let's just go ahead and have some interesting. Now, one thing I'm going to say about the, the incrementals. If you watch the numbers when I start to increment, I don't know if you can actually read that or not. That's not coming out too well. But. It doesn't do it on a time basis. It does it on a frame basis. So you got 30 frames per second. So take a second, divide it by 30, and that's what your increment time is going to be. This has become a, an issue sometimes with me where I'm thinking, okay, well, if it was just 0.05 seconds over instead of 0.07 seconds over, it'd be stopping right where I want it. So but you don't have that option, unfortunately. All right, let's just jump up. All right, let's split this puppy. Right. Come on. There it goes. 
live again. Now oh, let's Okay. Lots of fun with the transitions here. Yeah. I was curious if your capture device captures it like a certain native resolution or something, you know? I don't think there's a native resolution. You have to tell it what you want it to capture it at. Okay. All right, this is pretty much it. I'm pretty much done here. I'm just playing around now. Um, I don't know if anybody really wants me to go through and start really playing around with Eclipse and things like that. Put some interesting transitions in here. And yeah, I do think Steven showed us most of the capabilities of Windows Movie Maker, but does anyone have any specific questions about how you can do X or can't it do Y or anything? Or is everybody pretty much satisfied? Yeah. Are you satisfied with that? Did you learn something? Ready to go make movies? No. What, what do we do if we don't have XP? Can we download this? I don't know. Um, I figured if you're going to go and actually download it... <laughs> okay. I don't really know whether you can download Movie Maker for say 2000 or um, but I figured that if you're going to go to the process of going onto the internet and looking for something looking for it you're probably going to go looking to see what other options you've got having movie maker with XP means it's there you don't need to go to the internet you don't need to go do any of that kind of it's right there boom ready to go you're ready to launch if you got to go looking for it you might want to try to look for something else like some of the other suggestions that were made today that might be a little bit better, especially if they're either shareware, freeware, or otherwise low price. Uh, they're all crap. Unless you pay money, it's hard to get a good one. I guess the math people would argue with it. But, uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, I think you'd be, you might be better off with, obviously, you can find things that are better than this. That's very clear that there are better editors out there than what this is. This is just they are ready to go, and that's what its advantage is, is that it's there. And if you're just looking, like I said, to put clips together, you want to take the, a clip you've downloaded off the internet, and you want to get rid of, say you want to get rid of the credits at the end of the clip. You just don't want to. You can dump it in here, boom, done. Five minutes later, you're finished. You can now watch your clip without any of that stuff going on. And then if you want to say you've got something you want to put up on a website, and it's on your video camera, well, you can dump it in the video maker and dump it in media format, Windows media format, which most websites, or when you go on the internet, usually people can handle that anyway. So, all right, any final questions? No, well, I thank you very much. Sorry I was a little bit scatterbrained when I did my presentation, but um, I thank you. Uh, the PC videos yeah. are done with uh, DV cameras, yeah. and they're edited with iMovie. iMovie, huh? And they're they're set at uh, a max 256 kb kbps, but in practice it's a lot lower. So we have 90 minutes of video for about 100 meg. That's uh, pretty compressed, isn't it? It's really compressed. Yeah, actually. <coughs> We, we, got, we got a couple of toy times, and before that, there's something I want to discuss. But I guess we could talk a little bit about video. You're not trying to cut us short. That's, a, that's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, video is really an interesting thing, too. And I think as a uh, amateur video guy, it's, like, it's just frustrating what, what, what's available. I mean, the video editing is like... You feel like kind of like wrestling with a dinosaur or something. Like you're, you think you're gonna be able to edit your video really smoothly and nicely, come out with a really exported, lovely video. But first of all, the resolution in which you shot it at wasn't great. Your lighting's not great. Nobody is an actor, so 
kind of like, like crap anyway, and, and well, the dialogue's not that interesting. It's a lot of downtime, so you export this huge what movie, and it's a bunch of stuff no one wants to look at. He <laughs> know garbage in, garbage out. That's, that's true. Or like, or like you spend like ten hours editing the next video, and you. You finally get it up there and you get it out and you shrink it down to where it can play on the web and you realize that your titling engine that you used, it, the letters are like they're like two point fonts. No one can read them. Because you didn't allow for the compression when you use the titling engine. That happens. Well it's just like I mean it just it's like when using this thing. I mean it's like it's it's it was like one or three. Well the other thing you could do though is that you could make it for DVDs. And then, you know, I come in people DVDs and VHSs. Yeah. And that's watch them. Sure. Huh. Actually, I'm, I'm, a, I am impressed with the videos on the web now for the NFBC. They're pretty, they're pretty, they're pretty nice resolution. Oh, okay. oh I, I'm, uh, inside Mac TV is doing a, a security con, uh, making movies. And it's, uh, uh, I, uh, inside Mac TV is a video podcast.